What we're going to be looking at here is stock options expiration versus not meeting the vesting requirements and how we'd handle these for our entries here. So for example here on 11X1 corporations A stock options included here we'll go through it quickly. They granted options to executives to purchase 10,000 shares of $5 common stock and the options were granted here on 11X1 here and they were executable here two years after the date that they were granted if the employee was still working at the company. So there's a two-year Investing service period here. Three, the option price was set at $40 per share and the compensation expense for these options was estimated at $900,000. And on 51X3, 9,000 of the options were exercised here by the executives and uh, point uh, four here. The remaining 1,000 options, we're going to be looking at two different cases here. So this is what this is all about. We're going to look at case A and case B here. Case A is where the the expired. These options expired here in 11X4 and the company set this expiration date and the employees here, the executives, decided not to exercise their options. So this is what we're going to be looking at for case A here. In case B, let's assume that 1,000 of these options were attributed to one of the employees or one of the executives executives who did not meet the vesting requirements by he leaving the company and there's going to he's going to be forfeiting these thousand uh, stock options here a thousand options here okay so let's look at our example here okay what we're going to be looking at the options were a grant date here was 11x1 and there's a two-year vesting or service period required here and then the options are exercised here on 51x3 here so uh, first let's deal with this um, uh, the expense value of those options during the service period so what we do is we go down and we set up this account here it's called compensation expense uh, account here on the income statement and what we do is we expense the value of those options here over this two years vesting period this service period here so uh, total exp uh, uh, options or the stock or these option expenses was estimated to be nine hundred thousand dollars the value of those stock options so each year one half of the nine hundred thousand would be expensed here as a compensation expense uh, that goes up uh, what the employees would be compensated for based on those stock options so not half of nine hundred thousand four hundred and fifty thousand here would go to the first year here 12th end of the first year uh, of the um, uh, service period here, 1231X1, 450,000 debit or increase your compensation expense by that. And then on the next year, the end of the next year here, 1231X2, the remaining 450,000 debit or increase your compensation expense. Again, on your income statement. Okay, so now the balancing entry for that here, we go back to our equity account here on our balance sheet. And we that would go to paid in capital here for stock options. Again, at the end of each year here, 1231X1, we've would credit that here for four hundred fifty thousand dollars and the end of the next year here 1231x2 credit that here for four hundred fifty thousand so you can see what we're doing here we're debiting our compensation expense here for the half of those stock options value of half of those stock options each year here and then the credit goes to a paid in capital here for the um, on the balance sheet here equity account for the that four hundred and fifty thousand value of the stock options each year here okay so now we come along here and we're going to exercise these stock options at forty dollars per share that's the option price where we don't use the uh, market price we use the option price and in this case there's going to be nine thousand shares here exercise on five 1x3 at again the fair value here is estimated $40 per share so what we do here what we okay let's start with our cash account here for stock options we would debit that here for 360,000 simply the 9,000 shares issued at the $40 per share option price here 360,000 then moving over to our equity account here common stock uh, well it had that $5 par value here in common stock we're going to issue 9,000 shares here on these stock options again at 51x3 so 9,000 times the $5 par you come up with credit here common stock options or a common stock par count here for $45,000 okay so now we we've got to come up with a balancing account here for addition and it's going to go to additional paid in capital here common stock it's going to be excess of par but it's calculated a little different here again on 51x3 okay so 
what we would do here, we're going to take this paid in capital here for stock options and we're going to reduce it here by $810,000. That's based on the uh, 900 total value here of our paid in capital to our stock options here, 900,000 times 910 or 9,000 shares here or 9,000 options are being exercised here over the total 10,000 that are available here. Okay, so 9 tenths of 900,000 equals 810,000. So we credit our, our debit here and reduce our paid in capital to stock options by $810,000. So we had total 900,000 sitting here, 9,000 of the 10,000 were exercised, and that fractional amount here times 900,000 gives us debit or reduce our paid in capital here for $810,000. Okay, so now we can come back to additional paid in capital here for common stock and we can calculate that. And that's simply a balancing entry here between our what we had for our debits here and cash of 360000 plus our debit here to our reduction here in paid in capital of $800,000. Now remember, or $810,000. Now remember this paid in capital here is an equity account here. So it's it's not an asset account here. I'm just showing it lined up with the cash accounts here, but it's an equity account. So we have our debit here is a reduction here to paid in capital of 800,000 plus our debit here uh, to our cash account for 360,000. So that adds up to whatever the balance is here. So our common stock uh, par account here was for 45, uh, credit that here for $45,000. So the balance goes into additional paid in capital here for uh, excess uh, for common stock here, $1,125,000. So that's really the credit here to that additional paid in capital is based on the fact that we had our debits here, 360 plus our debit here of 810,000 and we allocated here the par value of common stock at 45,000. So the balance would go into a credit here, additional paid in capital, 125,000. Okay, so now we've taken care of that here. The issuing of those or exercise of those 9,000 uh, op stock options here, co common stock being issued. Okay, so now we come up to the case here where we're going to be looking at two cases that we talked about here. First, we're going to be looking at where a thousand of these options here were expired here, and then the other case where a thousand of them, well, what happened is the uh, one, they were attributed to one of the uh, executives here and he didn't meet the vesting requirements. The vesting requirements were not met here so uh, he's not going to be able to option uh, take an option on those thousand shares. So this is how we do it here. So what we would do here um, for our paid-in capital account and that's the remaining thousand options here stocks that were stock options we're looking at here. So for our paid-in capital we're going to reduce that here but whatever the remaining amount is here. So looking at it in our fractional amount here. Well, it would be 1,000 of the total 10,000 option or stock options that were available. So that would be one-tenth of 900,000 here for $90,000. Simply the remaining amount. We had 900,000 sitting here. We already uh, ex 9,000 uh, op stock options were exercised for 810,000. So that leaves debit here, the remaining amount here for $90,000. Okay, so now comes the case here. What do we do? Where is our credits balance going for that for this debit here? Well, we really have two choices. Well, we got really two choices here. Uh, case A is the case here where you're going to transfer it to the paid in capital for expired stock options. You're just going to remove, and that's the case here where the stock options expired. The um, employees or the executive says, okay, I don't want to take these options. The price isn't right on, um, on the market price might be low on them, and I just don't want to take these. So they expired. The company says you have to take them by uh, 11x4 or before 11x4 here. The executive said no. Okay, so they expired. So what we're going to do here, we move this equity account here, for, or reduce our paid in capital here for stock options here by $90,000, and we simply move it over here into a title, a uh, paid in capital account here in title at expired stock options. So we credit that here for $90,000, simply moving one equity account to the other. Okay, 
that's for case one here. Now let's look at case two here. This is the case here where this uh, one employee or one executive here, he had those thousand uh, stock options here and he didn't meet the vesting requirements. Say he met, uh, left the company, so he, they weren't available to him here. So on, uh, let's say on 11X4 or 114 here, he didn't meet the requirements. So what we would do here, rather than move these over into the paid in capital account here for expired stock options as we did here when the um, when the the employees didn't uh, the transfer or they they expired because the um, executives didn't take them we wouldn't credit our paid in capital here here we go up and we go to our income statement here for compensation expense and we credit that or we reduce our uh, compensation expense for the um, because those thousand uh, stock options here weren't weren't uh, the vesting wasn't met by the um, the executive here so we would credit it here and we'd be reducing essentially reducing our compensation expense here by ninety thousand dollars so we had our paid in capital here uh, for our stock options on our as our equity account on our balance sheet here debited that for ninety thousand so in this case we would credit or reduce our compensation expense. So we had a total compensation expense here of 900,000, but since the thousand shares here weren't exercised, that we, it was reduced here by uh, $90,000. So that's the difference here. When the, um, ex when the stock options, this point of this whole problem here, when the stock options here expired, we just moved it from one, uh, from our paid in capital stock options account into a paid in capital and we titled it ex Expired stock options here credited and just moves it over here credited for ninety thousand dollars and then the case if you have some vesting problems here the vesting is not made met here then you go over and you take whatever your paid in capital account here to your stock options whatever that amount here in this case it was ninety thousand dollars we would go over here to our compensation expense here credit that or reduce our compensation expense for ninety thousand dollars so I think you've got the point here the difference between when vestings aren't Matt here, you go and you reduce your compensation expense based on what you already had recorded here as an expense. In the case here where the uh, uh, stock options actually expired, then you simply just transfer them from one equity account here into another equity account and just retitle it here based on and call it paid in capital, in this case expired stock options. Okay, so that's the difference here between the two uh, things here, looking at our expired stock options here versus um, vesting problems here where they're not met. One reduces the exp expense on your income statement, the other one is just, in this case, just moving an equity account over on your balance sheet. All right.